persistent crickets we is. I have to interrupt those guys. We gotta get going. We got things to do. Well, that's it. We got things to do. And I don't know many people are doing what needs to be done. And I'm gonna interrupt those crickets to tell you this is BTWRLM272. For those of you uh, want to find this on a if you hear about it, you want to find the blogcaster if you're not there. This is where I put all the links. And those will be the extensions for your study or what you want to see. If you want to see things that you might be interested in, things I pull from. Typically, I speak just to the, the notice, which is in the headline, which may or may not work for every, anybody. I go through and do some of the analysis on that. Uh, just as a subject matter talking point, and partly because I have no direction to talk to you all. I do have an experience that lasts three decades of trying to figure out where the heck America went. And I've come down uh, quite a few paths. I've done quite a run, run around until I started to find out, really lay down what I thought was and uh, apply what, what, what was actually going on and not listening to labels and uh, what we're told. And it doesn't mean that what everything we're told is wrong, but you have to discern everything. You have to really work at, at some of that. And that takes a little bit of work, actually quite a bit of work, especially when you're uh, interfered with on many levels. But, uh, those of you that are um, maybe get this in the future, uh, when you want, if you want to listen live, which is be um, noon o'clock Pacific on Real Liberty Media, I think we can tune in to rlmradio.xyz, rlmradio.xyz. Uh, for those of you looking around and looking for a place, we're going to have to get back ordered up after UCY um, dropped. Uh, and so we have uh, we'll have another another shakeup going on. Uh, we I would thank, like to thank last week. I, I whether or not it was from the call or not, uh, my call for donations to freedomsnetwork.com. Thank you to whoever was that donated for one more month. So uh, appreciate that. And uh, and but uh, we, we, this shouldn't be so hard, folks. If you're all out there looking, you know, to try and work this thing out. I am suggesting to you strongly to work together, uh, work out what you need to work out and work together um, in the short run-up that you'll have to, to get it engaged. And uh, that could be one of the places that you do it. It's censorship-free. Uh, it's the same guy that, the uh, same cook and bottle washer that runs RLM is also the one that does the back the background work uh, with Bo Diddy Grimner, who does the work there to keep it up really open. It's really an open forum. And uh, it needs to be supported, given it needs to be supported. That's up to y'all. And so it was, if it wasn't for all these places, you wouldn't be hearing my voice for whatever value uh, that you find. And for all of y'all that keep tuning in, I do thank you for that. And then more importantly, you need to really spread this uh, broadcast around if you find any importance. And if there's too much in two hours, then maybe identify, go to, go to the uh, whatever file that you have, find the time, Tell people that they got to listen in certain time slots, and and so they don't have to listen to the whole thing. Because most of you don't, not to the ones that do, or not to the ones that listen live and can continue for two hours. And I thank you very much for taking your time each week that you do that. But for the most part, the downloads, I just found the total time listening. The total time listening is a far cry from the total time I do broadcasting, and so I'm just going to make the notice right up front to you. The way I structure the broadcast, and the way I almost have to structure the broadcast, and to show you the, the most the, the comprehensive global, and I don't mean the world here, I mean global, comprehensive subject matter across subject matter concepting, I speak through in a broadcast. It takes two hours. And a couple of you in the chat will recognize that. You say, oh, he finally, he, and it took him an hour to get back to the beginning. And then in the other hour, I get back to the beginning again after I do a foray somewhere. I'm trying to show you in that methodology, it doesn't matter what your subject matter is. They're all dealt with pretty much the same. And if I can get everyone to really see that, throw that, throw down everything you thought you knew about what you thought was, well, everything you saw it isn't working that makes you complain and start to work from a foundation that's much more solid and then move through what you find, not what you've been told you're going to find. You're going to move a lot quicker, actually. It's a little bit steeper run up. But you'll, you'll get my experience with me and my, my colleagues as well uh, is, mu is much better, uh, a much better review than um, what I hear the bulk of, if not all, of the, uh, the, the Internet, essentially. And again, I'm wondering if this is not one big honeypot to begin with. But, uh, so thank you for the, the donations of Freedoms Network to the donations to RLM. Anywhere that you can keep the voices uh, of uh, 
of knowledge. Uh, and then I would ask you for the ones that can direct you to action, because that's what it's all about. It's not about how much we know. I keep saying that over and over. Now, last week, uh, I got in uh, late uh, after doing, well, during my post-broadcast, was a conversation in the RLM chat. Now, normally, I, I avoid some uh, chat, a lot of chats. I don't. There's just not a place to go with it. But I attempted to make some communication about some what appeared to me a misunderstanding about uh, the broadcast or even a criticism about it, which I'm absolutely always, uh, always uh, interested in. The only thing I ask about your criticism is come with some foundation. And so, because I need to be able to find something tangible to work from. And I need to know that uh, there's something, you know, something to work with. What I find interesting, people that work with me or attempt to work with me, we don't have an, a, there's not an objection to what I say or do. We, we under, somehow we, we understand that there's a different world out there and you have to approach it a certain way and it's not what you've been told. And as you start seeing the clarity of this, you start to work through it, you start to see even more. And each one of the guy, guys that I work with, colleagues that I work with, they, they open up a whole nother world of, of unknown things that are now known. And then we work out how to get that to the greater public if you will, the greater amount of people that are, would be listening in different places. And, and so I don't get the kind of uh, objection or rejection or, or critiques that I get out of my colleagues that work with me, that we do things, that I do in, in some of the chats where I don't work with people. Uh, and uh, we tend to have a little bit of a, uh, I guess, of a headbutting of things. I don't even want to put a judgment on any of this. It's just what happened. So last week we got into a discussion. And... Um, it was uh, imposed upon me that I need to give you all a disclaimer because I, I'm telling you to go out and do something. Uh, someone wants to believe I'm telling you to go pick a fight and uh, that you, I need to tell you, you need to go uh, re-educate yourself. Well, that, that re-education part came late, late, late in the conversation. And that was uh, really only pointed out to people, a uh, certain type of people, re-education. Uh, I would ask you here, and my criticism of this whole condition is not not really on me at this point, uh, as I've been thinking about this. Uh, the criticism that I give you a disclaimer. I'm a, here's the disclaimer I'm going to give you up front. I'm, my disclaimer is to you is if you don't get involved, if you don't figure out what's up, what you're up against, you will be ter, uh, consumed by it, you consumer. However you have to go up against it, you will have to go up against it. And if you don't, you'll be consumed by it. So that's my, my, my disclaimer to you. Now, based on the concept of the critique, uh, the, the disclaimer was that you would have to, uh, I'm sending people out uh, picking fights. And I, I would then now, I have to now address the problem. I think I'm having, uh, as I told you before, I think I have people listening to me that don't hear me or, or hear me but don't listen to me or something. Uh, they're not listening very carefully, uh, and I admire a lot of these people a lot, but they, I still get some uh, guff over this stuff, and uh, it needs to be addressed, and because our divisions, our ever so subtle and, and slight divisions, are never going to get us where we need to go, if we ever choose to ever work together, or can. Uh, so I want to restate what I say. I tell you to go find find a wrong that you want to, that you need, a need, necessity, you need to make right. Let me interject on that. I'm not saying go pick a fight. And so those that believe I'm saying that, and, uh, and, and particularly I'm talking to one of the chatters that we chatted, that's fine, uh, but not necessarily to, to that chatter to, in general. I'm not saying go pick a fight. I'm saying go, look out. If you have the capacity and the skill to find a wrong that needs to be made right, focus in on that. For all of you all that are looking for something to do, that's why I say that. I'm not saying go pick a fight. I'm saying go find a wrong you need to make right. If you can't find a wrong, well, then you're not, you're not in a position that you're going to do that. I'm not go out and pick one. I'm not go knock a, a cop on the shoulder and say, hey, I have a First Amendment right. I'm not snuggle up to him real close without touching him and say, I can be here filming you and just pick a fight. No, I'm not. That's what my problem with the First Amendment guys are. So the point here is uh, I'm not saying go pick a fight. I say find a wrong. Find inside of you your empathy. You start to use from there. Go to intuition, your spirit, and start looking around the world. We're in a screwed up place. You, each one of us are going to have to make that decision. Find a wrong you need to make right and go make it so. The, uh, the final critique now is that I'm saying you need to re-educate yourself. Well, let me address that. I say, what have you heard me say in extension? I say, when you find that wrong you need to make right, go and... Go research the subject matter so you know what the battlefield, I say, you're going to enter into. 
Don't go enter into it before you know. Go and learn your best understanding about the battlefield and then approach it in a certain way. I've given you that. You just don't go stick your chin out and get it taken blown off by, uh, by the cops or anybody, the government. You go and you learn the battlefield. That's educating yourself, not re-educating yourself. If you didn't know, and we all don't know something, but if you find something wrong you didn't write, you want to make right, and you need to make it right, and you don't know the subject matter, aren't you a fool to just enter in and jump in and say, I'm going to fix it? I mean, come on, it doesn't even make sense. It just has no sense there. So the uh, tied in with the go find a wrong uh, that you need to make right is knowing the battlefield. That, that requires educating some, yourself. You do that for yourself. The critique that I, I have to give you a disclaimer about re-education, I can only say that's, that's only can only be directed to those that n know too much. If you know so much that, that I have to be re-educating you or, or impo you're imposing upon you that I say you need to re-educate yourself, then you need to re-educate yourself. But it's not because you're, you don't know. It's bec if you were just educating yourself, you'd be finding out for the first time. A re-education would be those of you that think you know. And I would be talking directly to that. And that, those of you that uh, think you know, I, I would definitely say re-educate yourself. And then I heard in the chat room the other night, uh, the cheerleaders come in, oh, re-education, like I'm saying the government has to do it for you. No, I'm telling you, you take responsibility for that. And so the re-education is only for those of you that know it all. And I'm telling you, if you're having problems with getting anything done, maybe you need to re-educate your position, your educate your understanding. And if that's a wrong... I don't know what to say about that. That's You go muddle around with that problem with you. Uh, I'm re-educating myself all the time. I'm educating myself all the time as well. What I try not to do is make excuses to not work with people that want to, whatever that minuscule amount would be. And so I take the criticism, but I don't think it's well found. And what I find is that people don't hear me. They don't listen to. I don't even know what the word is. Hear me and listen to me. Someone could work this out. I, I don't take. I don't have the time in my life to work out these nuances anymore. You either hear me or you listen to me or you listen to me or you hear me, or you don't. And I have asked you here recently, actually, maybe a month. Don't interject over what I'm suggesting you need to do with what you have learned to do when I'm suggesting a pathway. Go look at the pathway. Go study the pathway, and then maybe come back to me with your your hesitations, your critiques, your found uh, problems with what I'm saying. Let's do that. Let's get ourselves working together. Find, find the potholes in the pathway that I've made that you can't just traverse it. You're going to have to fill. Then fill them and then come back and tell me why. And then we work together. I can say avoid that. That's a disclaimer we could do. Avoid this spot. Don't go down this trail. I could start doing that, but no, I don't have that feedback. And so my disclaimer to you is if you don't act against the oppression you find, it's going to consume you. That's my disclaimer to you. Uh, my uh, other thing is find the wrong you wanted to make right and, and, and learn the battlefield and go attempt to take it out. And I say attempt because there's no guarantees. And thank you to those of you that were in the chat that saw that. You saw all this. It's just a, there's a common sense about this too. And I don't want to pick fights and I'm not judging. I'm just saying this is the dynamic. And when I suggest that you go read some information, I... Uh, just hope that you do. I, I was hoping that you actually did. But when I have to give over more information and then I don't hear uh, any, into, in, any, any research through that information, but I hear immediate critiques back, I have to understand that you don't want to know. The one who has the voice that says and critiques me for something that uh, perturbs them. Okay, I can't help that if you're not going to go read the information. If you think you know, and I'm telling you you don't, don't take it as an offense. Go, go figure out what it is that I'm saying that you don't know, and let's work together on how to solve it. And it's, uh, again, on and on, all the people that contact me in email. There's a subtlety about how they're approaching it, whether that becomes right for them or wrong. You know, you guys aren't so wrong. You guys know what's going on. I know that. I can see that. There are just certain... It's, when you run up against the criminality, it's usually when, I, when I'm dealing with a problem with somebody, is we're, we're, they've run up against a real criminal in the office or the seated decision or whatever it is. And that takes a different analysis, but it's very similar. So uh, find the wrong you, want to make, you need to make right. I say want to, but need to. Uh, don't go pick a fight. I'm not saying pick a fight. But when you go decide that you're going to make the wrong right, you better know your battlefield. Educate yourself on the specif specialness. And it can be quite extensive. I, I suggest to you, that you go in the administrative side of things and do comments, and then you get to see how the feely, the touchy-feely stuff about how the warm and fuzzy works on how they're subverting you, because it ends up working that way through a judicial 
uh, remedies, but it's not obvious. And you won't know that until you get in and start reading the procedures and seeing how they're obfuscating that as well and uh, really truly obstructing the justice that we um, ought to enjoy. And those are hard other law remedies in law, which are remedies to the extent of the criminality again. So there's no absolute. That's what I say. There's no there's no silver bullet. You hear me say it all the time. Uh, and so my my uh, disclaimer to you is: don't do anything, and and you'll be the cricket get stomped. That's pretty clearly. Uh, don't make an excuse against what I'm saying without foundation or a misinterpretation of what I say or not fully hearing what I'm saying or listening to what I'm saying or go reading the subject matter and not thinking about what I'm saying uh, in that context. I don't know what to say more. That, uh, that's a disclaimer. Don't listen to me, and you're going to have your problems. Go to the people. Rely on the people. You start. You continue to find have marginal results. That's telling you something. See, it told me something. When did that start telling me something? Seriously, let me look, listen to this for myself. I think in 2000, I think it finally dawned on me around 2000, well, it was, it was uh, maybe for sure, for sure it was settled in 2005. The marginal results were telling me something, and I changed my whole view at that point. I, I, it told me to go look at something, something else, how this thing starts to work. And that's where I changed, and, now I, and then I came on, to, I, was a, I was available to find the mining law, which is this land disposal grant thing. And these grants are pretty powerful things. They're domestic treaties, and I don't care what status, what status you want to talk about. Uh, they have, they are uh, absolutely innocent of any wrongdoing. So the straw man doesn't apply. All this stuff doesn't apply all of a sudden. But what you have to do is you have to stop the trespasser, the occupier, to that. And there's ways to do all that. And so that's what I ask you: go educate yourself on the base foundational stuff. Stop all this. Um, Internet, uh, you know, silver bullet nonsense, looking for the silver bullet. It doesn't exist. But there is a foundation you can lay to put yourself in a better position than you could have ever been using any of those methods within the structure. For all the people that argue with me about me going into the stru- into the system to get a win in the system, you're not listening. You're the ones that go in there and try to use those rules uh, 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 inside the jurisdictions and within the context of the rules to continue the argument. And I tell you, don't go in with an argument. Why is that so hard to understand? Now, you may not understand what that means, but how is that point so hard to understand that you don't walk in to a forum that's going to decide an argument with an argument? Why is it so hard to understand when you're hearing, and this is one of the things in the contentions that came up a bit, uh, when they don't understand the language, the very simple language. As I said, one of the reference, what, what they, I wanted all of a sudden, now it's on me to prove my point. So one, one question I said, we did it in the, in the sage grouse. In the, in the administrative side, we, we proved the sage grouse wasn't being killed by man. We exposed what was killing the thing, and we've changed something there. That was a proof and a success. Another example, I said, well, in the most recent equity cases I'm using to challenge citations, uh, the, the clerk came back and said, that the citation will be put in abatement pending the outcome and disposal of the equity action. I got crickets on that statement. That was cryptic to most people. And a couple of people I thought would have known. But that's not cryptic. If you go listen to this, the you Americans go listen to America, and you all across the pond go listen to the English, we're talking about some very basic language here. It doesn't, it's not cryptic at all. The citation is going to be held in abeyance. Well, what's abeyance? No, it's not a dog barking at the moon. It's a hope being held back. The citation is being held back doing what? Pending the, equity, the dis- disposal of the equity action. Well, what's the equity action? It was my collateral challenge to that citation and its lawfulness. Now, if, if, if that wasn't a success, uh, at least on the citation, I don't know what to say. And why was that cryptic? But that's the response I get. when, And I don't know what the point is. I don't want to get an argument here. I don't want to get a judgment. I'm not arguing with anybody. I'm saying, why are we arguing against ourselves in such primitive ways that uh, that statement should should tell you, if you've been researching law at all, a citation held in abeyance pending the equity disposal of the equity action should be pretty clear. And if you don't think it's pretty clear, I'm pointing out to you how far down the trail of knowledge they've allowed you to be that you need to fight your way and dig your way out of. If that statement isn't clear and it's cryptic to you, we are in a worse position. You can just know it for yourself. We're in a worse position than I could have ever guessed. And I don't know what to do about that. To me, that's like an illiteracy. And I don't judge people for being illiterate. I just I encourage you to fix it. And how many miners have I done that for? They, t- they come in with guilt. 
that they're illiterate to something. And I say, let's fix it. That's my attitude. And you know what? They all did. And you know what? They become better people for it. And now all of a sudden we can talk and we can understand pretty common stuff. That's what illiteracy does to us. Well, they did that to us in the so-called legal system. That's on purpose. The law, they did it to us when they made us illiterate, to illiterate to these things. And so I don't, I don't think this is a joke. I don't take any of this as a joke, and I don't take it as a judgment. But if we're, you want to say re-educated or educated, that means we're illiterate. If we were talking, it was literary. Well, everything's written, isn't it? So let's go ahead and put it there. We are an illiterate people. Pretty simple. Because you can see or read a dictionary and read the words and make even phonics, which I'm fond of, even phonics isn't going to help you here. You have to understand how to apply what you know. You've got to be literate in the application, the doing. And so the critique is accepted that uh, I need to give you a disclaimer, but I don't think you'll agree with the, those that, that had the critique won't agree with my, my, my disclaimer to you, that if you don't act, you're going to be consumed. The consumer society is telling us that. Now, uh, move on. Uh, we just about have work. We got to get past these divisions. We got to pass the, ex the the exclusions and the exceptions. If you don't think you like about what I'm saying, fine. Go find someone that really does work 100 percent of the time. Uh, as one some someone told me, that they take what they can find the best the best of all the of all the best they can find. Perfect. If that's how that works for you, great. Absolutely. And I would I encourage it. I did it. But it's, it's as important to dis to throw down what doesn't work. Literally, and find out why it doesn't work. And when it's commingled with things that do work, you got to be careful because maybe you, you're looking at a, uh, a deception. You have to cleave all this stuff. This is what I've been doing all these years for myself. Not, not, a, not an imposition on you. It's what I do. When I find something that works and then finds that it doesn't work all the time, there's maybe a truth in there, but it needs to be cleaved from the wrong part. And we don't know if that's information, if that was a step misstep if that's the way the reception of the forum you're in uh, in the in the official you're talking about and the criminality you may or may not understand is sitting there we don't we don't know we, we have to that's the end part of the analysis you're gonna you're gonna be once you get into this you're gonna be re-educating yourself all the time once you think you know something I, I do it constantly but I don't take it as an offense and I don't take that as someone has to tell me but nonetheless for the sake of one of the listeners, I will tell you, your disclaimer is you don't act. You're going to be consumed by that tyranny, the oppression that's over you that you don't stop. We're told about this in the past. And it takes a mass of educated people to keep that. That should have told you something else. That means you're going to be over under perpetual attack. And an emailer just this morning, thank you for making that observation. You, you see it. I don't have to tell you folks this stuff. What I do have to like, apparently tell you is don't fight with me. Let's work it out, and let's keep moving. If you can't work with me, fine. I don't really need all that. It'd be, I think it'd be nice if we could, but uh, like I was hearing before in some other broadcasts in the past, you know, it'd be nice if all these people that did our research could get together and actually get together, first of all, and then work out what subtle differences and then come out with something for, for, for everybody. But I can tell you, if, if I'm looked on in some exalted place and knowledge where I look, and we're supposed to never not know this stuff, if I'm looked at in some exalted place, how are we ever, those of us like me, and there's a few guys out there, how are we ever going to speak to anybody else? If you're not going to go and do what we ask, go read the basic stuff, get the stuff in your foundation, stop arguing with us. I don't agree with everybody. It doesn't mean I disagree with everybody. That uh, this is, a, I'm speaking a lot longer, again, a lot, always a lot longer on these really, to me, this, these are important problems. I really don't think we're going to do this, folks. And I'm still optimistic that we can. Uh, how nuts am I, actually? And I and I tell you that. I mean, it, who knows? It's things going. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to be going under under long before anything comes of this. I think. But w will anybody listen enough to me uh, that would carry on? I don't know that either. It's like a fool's errand. Talk about faith. Talk about faith, and so, and there's no evidence of its rece reception, except for in a few areas. And so little is that is that influence, but influence it is nonetheless, and powerful influence. Why? Because you stand on a foundation that is the rock and not the sand. The social engagement was a trap. It allows us to start getting into our discussions, and we really don't have to face each other. Where if I had to stand in front of you, you know, it's funny. I'd stand in front of someone, and all of a sudden we're not we're not such a uh, so belligerent, if I was ever belligerent, 
uh, people that would have talked at me uh, with an attitude, we work it out, and all of a sudden we're not, because we're really not different that way. Really, we aren't. Once you get past the pettiness of, of trying to, maybe it's ego, I, I don't know. And I, and I don't know I don't have one, but I really tr- I, I put that at the door pretty simply. And I'm looking for the facts of things. I'm not looking for the excuses. I'm looking for the honest critiques. I'm looking for the things that would make us better or make me better to make help uh, suggest a better point for everybody. I don't want to see everybody muddling around like they're in the dark. It really bothers me. And then we bump into each other in the dark and we critique each other over the darkness. And that's not working. So, uh, at any rate. Um, yeah, re-educate yourself. Those that think you know, re-educate yourself. It's really just continuing a re-education anyway. Uh, but don't hold on to the things you know work. If they start working, you have to hold on to those. For you and in those contexts, I say keep your mind open of the changing context, the shifting sand that you might have to be forced, that may be forced upon you. This is not something that you can live in your utopia. This world is one of applied force, whether that's consistent with a, a commonality of law that you might believe, or those that want to invade it. And uh, funny how this, these, knowledge, these words come along, and I'm not going to get into the depth of all this. I can't in the broadcast, but, but let's move on. You want to talk about a disclaimer? Here's, here's a disclaimer. Be careful on what you learn, on, the, uh, on what you see, and what you apply, and what you accept. I hear lots of people, because it's relevant to what I do in the land disposal side, underneath what we call coordination, and you'll find out that there's a corollary to coordination that's that's lawful in the administrative sense. It's called cooperation or collaboration. And if the government, the federal agencies can do that with you, if you don't know that battlefield, you won't understand the importance of it. And a lot of people don't. Certainly the miners do not. And I've had, uh, what, 10 years now of experience on how that, that they will reject, the microcosm of the miner will reject what I say, even though it sits right there in the rules and the laws to do as a tool. They'll reject the tool. I find this all fascinating about us. And where we assert the tool, the tool works. You put it in the, the right key in the right hole, the door unlocks. It's pretty fascinating. In this case, we can lock the, the agency out of something. But inside this collaboration and cooperation is the key to a knowledge that tells you that in that process, you're not doing things that are actually constitutional when you're regarding property, rights, remedies, any of this stuff. Any of the stuff that comes by way of a society that was created to recognize and acknowledge all these things in us. And it's really only when does when is it when are those things attached? They had to attach before, or as I say, antecedent. I don't say it, that's the word that's used. I just picked it up a long dog decades ago. It's antecedent or or subsequent. Uh, the civil liberties. Or even further down, the civil rights, which are that exactions of every kind. When do those how are those attaching and what are the words here? Uh, when you see the words, are they telegraphing something to you? I can look at words and know exactly a jurisdiction or authority or non-authority that I'm dealing with that uh, gives me the clue. And here's a, what came up, and I was just looking through some stuff here weeks and weeks ago. I finally want to get back to this just to get it off my tabs, and I think it's important to know. Was uh, just, again, no, no context other than just the seeing the word and then watching, looking down and seeing a simple um, definition. Uh, socialism. And where my eyes focused was on this other word, not the word, not this word, but the word that meant this word, and then related over to what we do that people reject and what I'm saying, you need to learn about, and once you learn about it, now you have the key to that kingdom. And you realize when you they're affecting your property, how to attack it. Uh, but socialism, it's another ism, but I'm not we're focusing on that. I'm saying you're looking at words being used so you can identify what's coming on you or where the, you found yourself when you show up or, or what someone's put upon you, and they're using all the nice and fuzzy, warm and fuzzy words, uh, well, however they want to come to you. And you've got to listen very carefully, and you fart, li- start listening to these words, and you start to hear what they're talking about. Socialism is, socialism is a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership and democratic control of the means of production as well as the political theories and movements associated with them. So let me go back before I go to the next part, which is where the word was that my eyes fixed on. Fixed on. Let's go back and look at all the ands 
all the conjunctive elements that we read just at the beginning of this definition are that are this thing called socialism. And I want you got to you got to keep this thing together because you're looking at a you want to take a bundle of of elements that sit in a basket that make this up, any one of which you hear existing, no, you can tell you're in that system, no matter what they say it is, no matter what they word they use. This is learning to discern by language, not getting into the nuance, tor- tearing down into the definitions of the words, just how they're working against you. I can get, I can go down to the nuances. I can get to the etymology. I can do all that. I can go ahead and tell you your dictionaries are useless if there's a word in statute that defines the word different. It's useless that dictionary. I can tell you all that. That's not the point. Where are you being used? Where are these words being used? Is what you're looking for at any time, wherever. Socialism is a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership, I hope you're counting on your fingers, this is three years so far, and, that's four, democratic control of the means of production, as well as, five, the political theories, and, six, movements associated with them. Six different elements in what so-called socialism is. The second sentence is a more of a confinement of the defi- of the words that are used to describe that six element uh, ism social ownership may refer may refer and this is your comprehensive definition it's not a definition it's a such as in other words it's other words but we're going to focus on these few social ownership remember that was like the third or fourth characteristic characterized by social ownership. The word character means obligated by. Social ownership is not private, is it? And it's also not public. And so we are using different types of words, but you notice socialism is a six-element economic and social system that's characterized by social ownership. That character is a name, or it's a, or it's a, a, a an obligation, uh, however so ap- allowed upon by you. Social ownership may refer to forms, not substance, but forms of public, collective, or cooperative ownership, or to citizen ownership equity. Equity. You hear me talk about equity jurisdiction. It's not that equity. And so here we go, now it's starting to understand what's going on, and I'm not going to get too deep more than just to show you some words. Don't they talk about collective and cooperative ownership? Uh, guess what? You get into this alternative to coordination in, underneath uh, federal uh, public lands management, and they have things called cooperative, cooperative agencies and collaboration. And so here we have that the alternative allowed that's lawful is something called that are the elements of social ownership which are an element of what socialism is shows you that coordination is not socialism but that's what the government imposes for you to accept and so right off the bat you're seeing what a non-private interest in some things, all kinds of things, but they're all economic based, aren't they? And so this is where I try to show you, be careful on be combining everything into this economic or commercial kinds of things, market type things. This social and economic are two of the legs of the international uh, imposition that we I talk about, we called, that they call, they're things sustainable. It's right built into the word. So, and I want to bring this on to where I talk about why you have to defend yourself against this intrusion. When someone wants to come and collaborate with you or cooperate, have you cooperate, they want you to cooperate. They're talking about bringing your, you or your stuff or your rights into a common, a vulgar sense, the common or general interest that you do not control and is then given over by you and your consent away from your control for doing something, which we'll find in what appears to be the antonym for socialism, which is capitalism. But let me go on quickly here and just see, there's an interesting little statement came up I had to qualify. A citizen ownership of equity 
and common ownership and collective ownership were all together in an extended statement. You see nothing of private here. Citizen ownership and equity. Well, let's go quickly to, uh, and I'm not, again, I, we can go on and on and get in depth, but I want you to get the, the general idea here and we move on. Because if you had just applied this amount and you look around, you'll see exactly what's coming on this, on you when, and you'll know exactly why I keep telling you about stepping back from the issue of allowing a common interest in your stuff to saying you are trespassing with that interest. And when you say that common interest was an authority, you just committed a felony. But let's, what is equity in, the, in regards of this thing we talk about economics? Not of jurisdiction of law, but economics. In accounting, equity or owner's equity is the difference between the value of assets and the value of liabilities of something owned. In other words, there's an equation they actually have for this. When you have a private right of exclusive possession against the whole world, is there an, is there an equation of balance to be made? Uh, this is a trick question, I guess I should say, but in the whole, is it? Is it, it's not really, but it is when you apply the constitutional requirement. And another thing that I don't like, but I don't want to get go too far with showing that, except that I can defend against it. I know it sits there. But uh, is this economic definition, uh, when applied to your land, actually applicable, where you have an exclusive possession? I would have to say on the on the surface of it, uh, it's not applicable. And now we start to see the cleaving between the attachment of uh, cooperation, cooperative, collective, common, all these things, citizen ownership, all this equity, citizen equity. It's a balance of liabilities and obligations against an asset. Well, well who is the asset when they're talking about you? There's an interesting term out of the uh, out of capitalism, actually. Uh, but if you're in this condition where you've allowed someone, you're also allowing someone to put this common equity on you or your property, you're already in the wrong place if you want to think you have private property. So socialism is the, is the collective, is the common, is the, uh, the Borg having an interest in things, and there's nothing outside of that interest. And when they work, the socialism hierarchy of authority is centralized control because you don't have any private control that you can hold out against the rest of the world which we have in the United States of America. Anybody who is commingling the uh, concept of taxation with what I'm talking about in land or the soil disposal is missing this point also. Uh, that's another fraud that you have to cleave away from your property if it's trying to be attached. Uh, again, there's ways to about that. But getting to this, I just saw, I just saw socialism. What I noticed was the word uh, cooperative ownership. And cooperation, a cooperative agency is in this uh, surrogate administrative situation in, in their land law. But we got to the equity being a balance equation that you're doing. Uh, when if you look at what property assets are, there is no balance equation. I'm talking strictly on the land, the possession, or property that doesn't have attachments, appurtenances, reservations, mortgages. You know, everyone wants to grab on this mortgage, but you just screwed it all. You screwed this concept all up. Forget that. That was S C R O O D uh, for those sensitive ears. So let's move on just so quickly. I went over and said, okay, let me look at this other thing. I saw capitalism against socialism again, is isms. But we get the idea here of what we're doing. And I say, look at these words as elements of being able to uh, identify what might be coming against you. Typically, you're finding a cooperative collaboration coming after you. So you know, the warm and fuzzy is we we all together, right? Uh, that's we, we shared prosperity. What was the A2030? It's all written there, folks. It's all based through this idea. It's coming through uh, a, it's actually an adulterated socialism. They get you to believe this collectivism, is this, this cooperation is what we need to do. We all got to get along. But see, we're not, we're worrying people, essentially. We haven't really, uh, we're not really live and let live. As peaceful as each one of you are, are when someone decides that they want your stuff, no matter how right they are, you're going to have to contend, uh, contend with that. In fact, I saw a castle, a picture of a castle. Uh, who this this uh, king? He was a he was a, one of these. He was a sovereign. He had a, he could decide his own thing. Uh, he decided to build a castle. He had to make it so big. He was protecting against. He couldn't stop the Mongol horde. He still had to build a castle. 
Because the world is not such a nice place. And that's the reality. You have to contend with that. And that's why I see a lot of people missing. I wish the world was a peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men. I wish all that, but it's, it's a lie. We're not that nice to each other for some reason. And at some point, you're going to find some, some thing you can't work out with somebody. And this is where this law comes around to give us remedy for those instances. What happened was the government became one of the parties. And we didn't, we didn't beat that down. Uh, but capitalism, capitalism, now listen before, we've got to kind of look very carefully at how they did this. Uh, capital, uh, socialism is a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership. Uh, the, nothing private. Capitalism is an economic system based upon private ownership and the means of production in their operation for profit. Characteristics, not an obligation, but a characteristic, elements of this are, uh, include private property, capital accumulation, wage labor, voluntary exchange, a price system, and competitive markets. I'm going to end there. You see on the capitalism is an, also an economic system. So if you, if you talk about your private property in the concept of capital, you've already mistaken the problem. You've, you've, you've brought it into a marketable sense, which is potentially regulable. For the sake of understanding the two basics of the two systems, you see here capitalism is necessary for private ownership. You don't see any of the and, 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 as well as connections to this condition. Uh, private property is something identifiable, and then laws are set in motion to be a notice to everybody on how, that's, how each private property is going to be collect, uh, protected. Again, this is not where the government has become itself a party to your stuff, where you most necessarily have probably given up some application uh, to diminish it, or you've bought, purchased, without grant, you've purchased a property underneath a system that the agent of that system diminished your title in the transfer papers. That's where the actual tenancy gets created. If it isn't in the title system itself. Uh, when you have a Torrens title system, don't you understand the patent was its own evidence of title? Why would you put it in another system? People don't recognize some of these obvious disclosures uh, to us. So, right off the bat, they're both economic systems, but one's based on private property and one's based on the six elements and characterizations of, of common uh, and preferred infra, uh, stock, if you will. What's interesting about the extended definition of capitalism is it, it actually brings up the concept of chattel, movable, movable. Okay, that was a bad impression of a cow. Movable, chattel, not cattle, chattel, but it's the same thing. Movable. Now that, now we get to our human capital, our human resources. It's someone's capitalism on you. And this is where I keep trying to tell you, whether you, reject, you want to disclaim or reject what I'm saying, you need to identify whether or not you are property. You better be the capitalist in the sense of the definition of a, in an economic sense. And you be able to tell people that's not in that system. And you can't make, you don't have a status to capitalize on me. I'm not your movable property, your chattel, your cattle. I'm not the herd. You see how that brings us, when they, someone does that to you, you now bring, brought into at least the character of a socialism. And so you have to be the capitalist or you're not. In this case, private property is the, is the definitive change without attachment, which con is consistent with a grant that grants you not just the use, but the possession and exclusive against all the world. So let me ask you quickly, those of you that are in the fiat system, when you have a note, an evidence of debt, it's a bill, a bill for the amount on the money, are, are you in a are you using a capitalistic system? Do you have wealth? No. I'm going to answer quick. No, that's an evidence of debt and someone else printed it. You're in someone else's field. You don't have wealth. Or the, miners, the miner's wealth is in the bank. And maybe yours is too, but it's really a debt, isn't it? If it's money and it's in the bank. The miner's wealth is in the bank, the literal Mother Earth bank. 
it's in gold, silver, and other precious metals or other metals that have been expanded to be uh, developed into valuable mineral deposits. That's where society starts. It then gets adulterated into commercial or economic means. And we've done, uh, my colleagues and I, we've, we now understand this really pretty clearly. And this is where it starts to show the chasm of the difference and how you get drawn back into a system that's ruling over you and you just start whining about the fact you've got to pay taxes, you've got to get licenses, you got you don't even understand what you're doing in the system, yet you complain about it. And I come weekly to try and explain this in all the different ways to try and keep you away from it uh, or explain how this is done. But here in this little, this little definition, if you listen to the words the government uses, you will realize that they move a socialistic-ish, it's really fascism in another way too, through the sustainable things, which is actually foreign to you. And you essentially accept it all. And no one takes the steps in order to, like I told you, even if I had a license, a driver, they call it so-called driver's license, even if I had one, I could work within that system to, to try and work to defeat it, expose it. Especially now with the equity consideration. Not the common equity, the private equity in law. Again, identifying that these people come under a color of authority to diminish these private properties. They're coming to steal your wealth with their social system. Now we see that right in the consensus uh, and um, what was it called? The dispute resolution process. It's arbitration processes. They tell you in their definition, they warn their people who administer this stuff, be careful, you're, you're coming against laws and constitutions and property and all this stuff. You come on your own as a foreigner, be careful. And so I tell you this all the time. I wanted to go through it. just kind of fascinated me. Just these two little things I saw. It kind of captivated me for a while. And here now I've spent all this time to discuss it with you. If you just look at the basic two paragraphs in the definitions, you will see the, the elements that separate what ails you today. And what is what they've been coming on when the government, the federal government said the, the, the thousand points of lights guy said we're going to go to sustainable. When the guy right before that said we're going to go to sustainable, that was the clue it wasn't going to be your rights no more. And we needed the masses to step up to say you can't do it that way and we won't let you. And this is how. In other words, as I point out, when you get in the patent, which is the evidence of the exclusive possession and enjoyment and use of that property against all the world, including the government, and then I show a statute that says that that patent is evidence that shall be taken, uh, the, the judicial notice shall be taken, and that may not be by any of the legislature, the agencies, the executive, or the judiciary interfered with in any way in the United States. Uh, I ask you, what's, what's not perfect about that? I'm not talking the corruption that will come and invade. I'm talking about that law and that protection and the recognition against even the government's intrusion. I don't know what else is more perfect than that at this point, minus moving on to another thing. But I'm not going to move on to another thing until we get the foundation here. And I don't think enough people are listening to what I say. When I have to tell someone to go get a document and read a document, I've repeatedly, repeatedly, and repeatedly over years said to go read to get the idea of what you're dealing with on just the highways, and they haven't done it, and they have a criticism for me, I have a question about that. And any one of you that would do this. I don't tell you to go read stuff just to have you go read stuff. No, that you're getting a foundation. You're probably getting the most high-graded things I can try to point to you at this time in a study and research where I made a mistake. I didn't collect all my knowledge and stuff in the past. Didn't even have the internet to do it, actually. So, the, just these two words, looking at the word, at these at these concepts as you go read, and again, it's just off Wikipedia. There's much greater discussion we can have. I'm not going. It's really kind of irrelevant at some point. When you understand these concepts, what comes against us now can be defeated by understanding they telegraph their coming by the use of those words. You, again, remember, I we keep telling, uh, I keep pointing out the Fed, which issues the notes must take gold and silver as asset, was a clue. It's right here. They, the Fed, which is underneath the system of Federal Reserve notes and your full faith and credit, which is debt, is not wealth and asset. And they can't account for it that way. Why would they even care to account for it if it was actually totally com not non-constitutional? 
They wouldn't care, but they do. So that's a clue. And so they take it as an asset. What did this say? This is, assets are private property. When you get to socialism, those assets are attached to six different elements of servitude, obligations and characterizations. And when you hear those words coming at you, you know who you're dealing with way before they get to you. And this is what I say. It, it telegraphs how you're going to respond. And that I tell you, that's just knowing, it's knowing your enemy. Because if they were not coming at you, you wouldn't see them. They're not an enemy until they come at you. And that's the problem with an American system. You can't necessarily... There's a, there's one rec, there is a mechanism, but I won't discuss it today. Uh, but but it's anyway it's got its, it's got its own elements it's got its own requirements uh, you cannot really respond until you get attacked first that that's one of the frailties if you will yeah, but for this one other thing and I won't mention it but uh, so you just have to fortify yourself in the knowledge and I say understand the enemy enough to know you watch you see him coming and how they come at you is through this language and it's not so a deep a study anymore at least for me I know I have a lot of background that gives me this awareness but when I just read the Wikipedia, which you know is questionable to begin with, but I'm telling you in this definition and in this application, it's sufficient. And against something that we do all the time, I'm not talking hyperbola. I'm not talking about uh, opinion. I'm talking about what we what we see and do. It's how I identify a lot of this, just through this. You want to talk about voluntary exchange and all this other? It's here in the capitalism side. Do I say you're a capitalist if you do? Well, maybe not. But the point is, is that we're looking at these isms as a as a, uh, a a word form to show certain elements. And I'm saying you look at those elements as, if you will, jurisdictions of authority. And you find yourself what you do mostly with that. And I always look for what the other side, the, another thing coming at me isn't in me. And if it's not you, you should be able to identify that pretty quickly. Again, okay, so this is just a just two words. In it, I, I was, I'm able to identify uh, quite a bit in the world I see really as an adulteration of something that someone might might take on as a cloak of of, of enmity to, to, to attack I hear this I hear lots of people attacking capitalism uh, uh, you know or embracing socialism if you're if you're so-called liberal as not being liberal anymore but anyway they're attacking these things that are really pretty simply de- uh, understood uh, and they're not really something I, I would even use to worry about. I just put them, again, I don't put my knowledge on my on my sleeve. I stick it in my back pocket. And I listen for what's coming. I listen for the words that are being used. Like, and and not, again, if I if I hear the wrong words used in some stub, subject matter I've studied, and, and I can identify the words are wrong, I can tell whether or not someone's learned in that pretty quickly. It's the same thing. And then I would... But what I tend to do is I try to correct the errors up quick so that we get past the problems there. And that sometimes is offensive to people. But if you don't do this on someone that's an aggressor against I mean, aggressor, not someone that you're just dialoguing with, or talking with, chatting, whatever. Someone that's trespassing you, you don't get that clarified pretty sternly and quickly and, and properly, uh, they will consume you. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. And if you're not going to first educate yourself or uh, on on these subject matters, or re-educate yourself as you find certain things were not quite apprehended quite correctly, uh, they will consume you again. And this is the problem: the dog eat dog world. You dog. Uh, I don't know anything about that, but there it is. I don't like it, but there it is. So, so I want to get back now, moving that along. I hope. Well, then let me, another word actually, as I think about it, uh, and a question, and I. I, I I was listening to a dork table, but on sat again in the morning, it's pretty rough in the morning, moving in and out, things happen, and I can only hear parts about it, but I, I thought I overheard a question, and if I'm in error, excuse me, but I'll say it again. It was the question on this term, uh, uh, unalienable or inalienable, and how to pronounce it. I think Grimner was asking for it. Uh, I, I didn't really hear if there was an answer. I didn't, well, not one uh, wasn't quickly forthcoming, but I, I've discussed this before. I explained it. And I thought it was important because on this discussion of words and understanding them properly and understanding their sources, this is what our problem is. We start getting into all the old things that are passed on like they're real, like they uh, actually function in the world, and, and they're the way that you'll find them when you walk into them in the world, and they're not. Uh, the, uh, mis- the lack of understanding about this is, uh, in my mind, critical because this is where lots of people go down uh, find the wrong path. 
they put themselves and they actually limit themselves without knowing this. This is where you start finding a dictionary word. If you know all the different, if you, if you can find that there's a lot of different definitions, I call I say call those de, de, uh, jurisdictions and find out where they're used, and that's where you use them in that authority. And similarly with this one word, uh, and I'm uh, fortunate to have seen the adulteration to it. And it's partly why I think his name is Jordan Maxwell. I'm not a fan of Jordan Maxwell's spin of a term. Yes, you can apply all like the birth and a ship and a canal and the birth canal and all that stuff to Admiralty and all that stuff. Uh, yes, you can do all that. And I have to tell you, it's pretty clever. But you know, all that was started back, as to my knowledge, I watched it not happening, and then I watched it start to happen around the middle 90s. And all these uh, so-called patriots, uh, and, uh, they may not be bad, bad dudes uh, or, or women, but I think they went astray. They, you know, you want the pain to stop, and so you'll find any kind of way. All kinds of neat, nifty things were coming out at the time. Uh, one of the things was to convert this word unalienable to unalienable where they put the emphasis on the lean part. Now, I've explained all this in a broadcast past, and, uh, and I apologize for not having a place I could go link you to, so you don't have to hear it again. But this is so critical to understand what's going on to people. When you hear other people say, I'm going to go back uh, on people that have these, these processes that they're using that they say they claim that they research, a lot of it comes out of this kind of this nonsense that came out of the 90s. One of the things, it's, in, it's instructional, but it's not functional, is the twist on saying the word alienation to alienable. And then you have the other one that I talked about. You have un, un, unalienable, and you have inalienable. And then you have that. So let me get to the first. Uh, unalienable is improper. What they did there was a, it was a, an adulteration, uh, clever nonetheless, on uh, the application of commerce on your rights, but that was in the commerce section, of liens. That's a final process of, of execution on a process. That that was an adulteration of something else that started to come out of the crack the code uh, type of information, and you transmitting utilities and all this other stuff, and you write liens and all this. This is where the Doucette people, the common law people, were kind of, they've kind of messed, went off the rail. Uh, and didn't see all all the blazing neon lights that were made right after that nonsense started happening. Uh, but unalienable was a fabricated uh, enunciation. And so anybody that relies it on in that regard is going to rock themselves into a limitation and a problem. And they're not going to talk to the more comprehensive term that the actual enunciation speaks to. Alienation. Alienation. The first emphasis is really on the word alien, not lean, alien, foreign. And unalienable is, un is based on alienation in property. That you cannot be made an, in the un unalienable, not unalienable, but unalienable condition. You cannot made a, be made a foreigner to your own uh, property. That's what that means. It has nothing to do with liens. Now, there's a subset of logic that says it can't be leaned either, but as I just said, it's a subset. If the property cannot be made, make, you cannot be made foreign to your own property, well, certainly a lien can't attach. But the source of the law is about property and the foreign, made foreign to your own property. A government can't do that to unalienable things. The emphasis is on alien in that word. Let me go now and move over. I hope that's another clarity. I said it before. Okay, I'm seeing now Grimner saying the question was from uh, Vin, uh, Vinny's Ponder Gander uh, show on Friday. Uh, so thank you, Grimner. Um, yeah, so uh, it was like I said. I was, I was in. I heard I was on the on way back out. We had things going on. It's the way I, I tend to. Uh, it's kind of not a good thing. I, I can't sit down and, and do things sometimes. But anyway, so that was the thing. Don't put the emphasis on lean. It's actually limitation, and it's not actually proper in application it's the the it's an a nation it's an alien nation it's uh, something that that is affecting the first the alien um you are being removed you, you are being imposed upon uh by you are being foreign being made foreign forced whatever 
foreign to your own will, property, consent, remedy, whatever. That, those things that are unalienable uh, are outside what the government uh, can interfere with. It's like um, exclusive possession. Inalienable. It's still not inalienable. Forget, don't put the emphasis on the lien. Put it on the alien. But it's inalienable. Are those privileges civilly invoked? As I, we talked about before, that would be the vote. A vote is an inalienable privilege. And if you look at inalienable, in, inalienability, it's not general. It's not applicable to everyone. It's, uh, it's got its conditions. And if you look at it backwards and you see that the right to free speech is kind of like an inalienable right as well because they've conditioned it somewhere, somehow. Uh, so, not getting too bogged down in that. So, I wanted to, this is critical to understand. Uh, we did it to ourselves on this. It was cute, clever, but it's not, it, to me, when I got on property, it completely missed the point. It gets people focused on the wrong thing. And if, this is the subtleties I keep suggesting are out there, and the diversions and the distractions and the just the lack of the bad information. And for me, you push it on the on the commerce side by pushing it on a lien, you're going to miss your property side big time. You've already shoved your property into the commerce side. And made it subject. Oh, it's not subject to that process. Well, what process might it be subject to? Well, unalienability is not subject to any process. Inalienability is. But no emphasis on the lien part. That was, a, that was an adulteration by uh, people who... Well, I don't know. I don't know how it got started. I just saw it being used. I thought it was clever. It gave you an instructive focus. Because you think it's unalienable. It can't be leaned. Well, that's only a small small enforcement capacity typically given to the government. That isn't even a part of your property, actually. And so you, you, you kind of give yourself the self-inflicted wound there. And I want us to stop doing all that stuff. And that's what those kind of things I talk to. I say, listen, go read this stuff and go read it for the proper, how to properly use it. But most importantly, look how it gets worked with. You work with it in a certain way. And the system won't work with certain things either. Or they'll be silent on things. And that's the silence that I tell you to take cognizance of. It's kind of a hard thing to notice. But when they're not talking about something, it really uses me. And I'm talking about over you read and you see action over time. And they always don't, they won't touch a certain thing in a certain way. That's telling you they probably can't touch it, and they aren't. And that also tells you that there is something. For as lawless as it looks, there is some law working out here somewhere. I don't know about most of it, but it's out there. And it gives us the ability uh, to, well, interrogate the reality of what we're up against, which is how I use this. Uh, and I want to get back now. Okay, now it's enough, I guess, on the, on the terminology uh, for today. Uh, it's not unalienable. It's on the emphasis on alien, on the word alien in alienation relative to not being made foreign to your own property. When you are in a grant of pro land or have a property that no one can make a claim to that's private property, then it it's not, you, you can't be made foreign to that by some arbitrary or any, actually, anything, especially where a property patent land Evidence of title of your holding claims right there in the grant by that same sovereign that it is a stop from interfering in the future from. When it says it's exclusive possession, that's been interpreted to mean against the entire world. Now, what, why would I want to go to il, unalienable when I'd rather, I'd rather not be made foreign to my property. I'd rather not be made an alien to my own property. That's what unalien nation is. Alienation. It's not alienation. You can't be made foreign. And that has nothing to do with the lien process. It has nothing to do with karma, uh, with the uh, UCC. It has nothing to do with somebody's ideas of what they crack the code or whatever, all that stuff. It has nothing to do with any of that. But that adulteration, I think, has stunted quite a few people. It's also the stunting I see that's been made uh, of the hoopla around straw men. The concept of it. Yeah, it's there. And yes, it's a fiction. And yeah, all that stuff. But you're putting too much emphasis on it and not really stepping away and saying, wait a minute. As I tell you before, if I can find that's a fraudulent imposition and it comes under a call of authority, that's been a felony against me. I'm, that's an alienation of me right, right there. It has nothing to do with the lien, does it? But it's an alienation where I made foreign to myself and they don't have an authority 
and I haven't given consent? These concepts are really very powerful, but they're very simple. And so there's no convolution in my mind about it. And I would have, have to say I apologize if I'm making some sort of convolution that makes an argument with people. But that's be, that part can be solved by actually communicating and having substance in each one of ourselves when we come to talk and not be a promotion to what we think we know. I mean, whatever I try to do, I don't try to say, oh, just because someone thinks I know so much, then I must know something. No, I don't work that way. And so I have to bring, you know, and sometimes it's kind of tedious. that you got to go back through and, and kind of prove your steps to someone, but that's an education process. I have no problem with that either. It just takes time. It just takes time. And sometimes you can get cut through the mustard pretty quick if you like mustard and you get onto the meat of the stuff. Pretty quick for those of us that are wanting to do that instead of really argue. But so how about getting at stuff? What about uh, how do we get move uh, into where I want to go here was really to go back to last week. I, want, I didn't touch on something last week. We're going to move into some uh, health-related issues on uh, and try to tie some things in. Again, I, I don't have the time to do the deep stuff, but we can see the, the, the general trend, as they say. But we can see things that we can bar be listen, put our mind to to be aware of uh, what's going on, and uh, we can connect the, our own dots that maybe most people aren't going to connect on their own. And I guess that's what I'm trying to point out to you. These These words are dots you connect and once you uh, it's like the old you see dots on a page when you're a kid and you connect the dots and you draw something eventually you connect all the dots and you see what the dots made up that's what I'm doing with all these what I call the elements of socialism or the el what the element or two notice it was only a couple of capitalism is when you see those elements and they're limited to those elements whatever those are you know you know what you're dealing with whether anybody is using the proper word you don't go aha you're a socialist no, you just realize they're there to not, they're there to to, uh, to probably interfere with your property, and so now you, depending on how you want to deal with that, will depend on how much you pull out of your hip pocket to show them uh, they best not trespass and not they have no right to impose that those elements on you. Uh, in capitalism, you'll notice the elements would be really more the identity of something and not the uh, con not the consolidation of elements for imposition. Uh, that's another thing I, know, I hope you noticed in that definition. You're in capitalism, you're identifying essentially with the pri that there's a private property, a private right to the property, a private condition on the property. That's it. It's not conditioned by conjunctive connections that have to be qualified. And those qualifications, uh, I hope you pr appreciate, were never going to be your statement because anybody in the collective has no word, no voice unless they are agreed to be the, uh, and probably underneath the threat of force and violence, they are agreed to be the seat of decision to make a sale for all of it. So there's a lot to be said, as I said, in those conversations. But what about you and your property? And you want to get things done. And what about the uh, the uh, your your body, uh, you being your own independent, non-dependent, I guess I should say there, uh, 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 mind, body, and spirit. And you want to keep your health about this. This is where I want to move. And why it's important. Uh, how you see the integration of itself inside is a protection. But when you bring foreign things into you. Uh, that it's not necessarily a safe thing, and that other things in the world, it's like a, in this regard, I told you yes, last year, uh, last week, uh, about this uh, cholera thing, where it reaches out and grabs your DNA. <laughs> the, the things in this world really want to consume everything. It's a parasitic type of a condition. It's almost as if one of our, our objectives is to not be the host to any parasite. You know, we really don't want to be the client. Uh, the client either to a host system. Uh, this is a like it's almost like a, a metaphor. Uh, but last week we talked about the terminal breast cancer cured in quotes by injecting patient with billions of her cells. What I didn't explain then was what they did is they reprogrammed the white blood cells to accept a particular type of DNA that identified the the cancer. So we have gene modification therapy that was used to modify what, how her body saw, her white blood cells saw, the cancer that was otherwise blind to it. And so we had evidence, if I was tying it back to the cholera, looking out for new DNA to epigenetically or adaptogenetically adjust itself to be immune to the host antibiotic. It was, here we have man mimicking that process to be able to fight or so-called cure a cancer. 
something that the body couldn't see because cancer has developed these shields, these uh, mimicking devices. Well, let me add another thing, that when you look at the spiral, we're told the spiral and protein folding and shaping and geometry. I want you to, I didn't talk about this last week, and I'm not going to get too deep just to hit it and run. This, let me offer to you that this uh, changing of the DNA changes geometry and structural change makes geometry geometric and structural changes which is how the body communicates of what friend or foe is and I, let me just if i had a pipe and i and i and i had a 90 the body re, saw a, a friend as a 90 degree angle and the cancer learned to put a 90 degree angle in itself so it looks like a friend what this did was it took and put a 45 degree angle in the in the critter, critter and now the body said hey that's not a friend that's a foe because of the way the DNA made this thing fold or unfold and the shape. And as I say that, and I wasn't going to talk about it, but I want to, Vin, I think I saw Vinny's in the uh, chat room, and you talked about um, uh, your, 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 health, your health issue. I can't remember. It, but, um, osteoporosis is coming to mind. But uh, I want to point out something about, about these geometries, uh, that one of the stated uh, at least aids in helping uh, this problem. It's really an immune system attack on your immune system for the cartilage uh, that keeps degrading, was having a particular uh, non-denatured, um, darn it, the words aren't coming to me. I, I wasn't prepared for this, but it reminds me to say it while I see your name. Uh, there was a certain chicken cartilage that you, if you cooked it or heated it, you would destroy the geometry of the material that you need from the chicken cartilage. It's cartilage. It's not just about like shark cartilage. I think I was hearing this on the broadcast as I went through. Uh, that uh, it occurred to me that maybe people need to check out this interesting dynamic on shape and geometry that I think is, is as important to health uh, and looking for why we look for more natural sourcings uh, that as any understanding of mechanisms like let's say the depositing of aluminum in the brain in a certain spot, is that these are shapes that the body recognizes. And one of the so-called, one of the stated cures for uh, for this problem here, uh, osteopro, uh, osteo, anyway, I don't remember. It's not coming to me. I don't know why. Um, it is, I guess it's just arthritis. I guess there's two different ones and I'm getting confused. Uh, but they're both similar. I think it's just arthritis. Is to you have to program, educate your body to remember what cartilage looks like in the body geometrically. And the way you do it is you have to ingest uh, apparently the highest form of uh, concentration of this certain cartilage in the geometry is in undenatured chicken cartilage from a breastbone. And you have to be able to get that in a particle size down to the lower intestine where the Microphage educates itself on what the body is, and if you put that particular uh, geometry there for the microphage to educate itself, it won't go to the the joints and destroy them because of the uh, chemical reaction that's there to break and flake off your your the cartilage at that spot, and the microphage won't then cause more damage. And they found that this, uh, there's a certain product, I can't remember now, UC2 or something. Yeah, undenatured chicken cartilage or something. The point I want to get at here is it's not about what you're taking in. It's about, I mean, as a substance, it's what is that substance relative to the body recognizing it as friend or foe. And geometry, I've always seen this in crystals, and this is partly what I liked about uh, geology and all this, uh, and crystal, uh, crystal energy and these things. Uh, those are made on geometry. Those are made on relationships to molecules. And it's it's even inorganically it does that. It, organically, the body responds to geometry. And I we're looking at that going on with this cancer that I wanted to, I didn't want to have time last week to talk about it. Rat was running out of time. But I wanted to revisit this. Uh, the Those that use your DNA, they, they may be using it for a nefarious purpose, but you may be able to understand that there's certain foldings that go on with the use of DNA that's on your body. See, it won't happen if it's not out of your body. The woman was cured by taking and reprogramming her white blood cells from her own stuff. 
and that is what tended to out. It, it broke this. It broke the shield of the that the that was being cloaking the the harmful byproduct. But when it went out, it went out in all parts of her body, and it took it, it found it found these misformed uh, existent entities, and it and the and then the white blood cells were able to attack that that misshaped thing, which I find just fascinating. Another, it's in a whole other level of understanding. Uh, but we got, the, uh, we got the, the, the key when science was finally able to see that bacteria, that cholera bacteria, having that, that pili, uh, pili, if you want to go that way, uh, reach out and grab a DNA, a morsel of DNA, and bring it in so it, it could adjust its own DNA. Aren't we talking about epigenetics, or I called it last week, adaptogenetics? It's already in the nat in the nature to do this and allow and protect, provide protections. Now, the title of that was really saying it's uh, worked on evolution. It's not actually evolution; it's adaptation. That's why I call it adaptogenetics. But we already have the example. What they did with the woman with the white blood cells is to reprogram the knowledge of the what was fender, friend or foe in a, an adapted system of the cancer, protecting itself, making it look like a friend, reprogramming the body to realize that, no, that wasn't a friend. No different than the arthritis being uh, aided. Not, it doesn't cure this, but it reduces the inflammation problem by not having the microphage go over there and thinking that the cartilage that's being broken apart by the chemical reactions that start it are enemy, so it doesn't eat at that cartilage faster. And so you don't, you don't, you, you interrupt the uh, the mad wheel that you get on, uh, re the bad loop that starts. That th this DNA bacteria from cholera was is explaining that nature already has this capacity, and so it wasn't. I wanted to get back to say that man's just now coming on to something that nature's been doing all along, which actually should is cool at one level, but it should terrify you because remember they're doing all this GMO, uh, this GMO, this manipulation before they understand any of the basics. And where do we get these? Get on moving on. About we got these uh, cancers and stuff in our body. Well, now we see the lab studies. It's good. We're now realizing nature does this to adapt. Like the cholera will adapt to a, an antibiotic by bringing in whatever DNA was manipulated there, and it will inject it. It will in. It will do its own. If I can say it's not CRISPR, but it does its own CRISPR connections. But it does it naturally and correctly. It doesn't add all the mutations. That's another thing we haven't learned, right? It does it correctly. We can't figure it out. One cell bacteria can do better in DNA manipulation than man. Think about that one. But a lab study shows now confirm uh, cancer linked to vaccines you probably had as, as a child. Well, just in time, they're coming on with this. They don't go to a foreign source to get this uh, DNA knowledge. They actually get it from you, and they, re and they put it back into. These are designer uh, drugs as well. So this is a blessing and a curse, if you will, in this woman getting her breast cancer um, uh, solved, is that you have to go to them now to get this, these cancers done, and it's still, a, it's still being built up. It's not a salvation, salvation here. They're still working on it. It only works for that one condition, and they're still looking to see that they, to advance it. But here we now have confirmation that our vaccines were giving us the stuff of cancer if we didn't know it before. You've heard that this behind the woodshed before. I'm just bringing confirmation. I want us to understand uh, uh, how this uh, system of imposition works. A lot of us see it, but I see too few people actually res actually responding to it. I, I see, and, I, and it's a difficult problem, but I see arguments gotten within families over this stuff, and I don't know that we need, I know it's a difficult condition, but I don't know that we need to get an argument if you uh, wait for the question. At some point, there's a question that they have, someone else has, and, and then you only answer it to the limit of the question, and you really don't answer the question more than offer something. Offer a piece of information. Have you considered this aspect? You want to sneak in on the problem. You surprise attack someone who's a resistant. It's a fortification. You're at war with that, with that observation. Someone who's starting to hurt will ask questions. They will start seeking information. Be part of what you throw out if they'll accept it. As uh, I, I find out that there's necessarily isn't necessarily a, a, an a optimum action, as our information was sent back to the Bundys was being either uh, thrown down or dismissed in favor of things like uh, common law, uh, common law um, 
misinformation. So offering the information doesn't mean they receive it either, but at least you are in at a time when they could use it. What you need to do is get there when they're not overwhelmed, uh, aren't overwhelming themselves, but offer a clear path. That's what you explain. Maybe even offer the hope that it would do something. Have you considered this? It does this thing here, and this is how. See, I didn't take a long time to explain it, and I just drop it on somebody. Drop it on someone who's resistant to the idea. I have this problem terrible. I want you to know the, I want to know everything. I want you to know everything in my mind because I think what I have in my mind answers how you approach all these ills, typically from government. So I'd like you just to know that, and we can move on. We don't have to argue amongst ourselves no more. But things aren't so obvious, and, and, and certainly that technology isn't with us at this point that we have to go little baby steps all the time, it seems. Uh, 60 lab studies now confirm cancer was linked uh, to, to, through vaccines. You can choose to, to make the vaccines, but go look at the product insert. I think is the, uh, the, va is the uh, tried and true thing. Go read that product insert very carefully. Get your magnifying glass out and find, this, find the side effects. And you're going to find uh, harms that you probably wouldn't want to put on. And I want to remind you, Vaccines are valid only in the context and in comparison in relation to a terminal event. In other words, they're only valid in, in their application when you look at death or, or serious harm as the consequence for not taking it. That's how I told you. We've talked about this all, all along, all before. Uh, so, but these, these, uh, these um, treatments uh, are actually the causation. Uh, for other things, as we said, it's the you know, bottom line. If I give you, if I have one, uh, if I have one, uh, my pharma uh, can give you side effects. Well, I'm going to give you more pharma. If my biochema, uh, my agrochema can give you something, then I, my pharma is going to be able to give you something. And all the doctors uh, can exploit that. So it's a, an internalized licensing system that allows for this exploitation. Uh, and so we move on to treatment. You find out that this treatment is maybe. Uh, you're looking for confirmation is all I'm saying. These are bag. These are the bag of facts for me to you. I, I don't. I've you know to me it's just water under the bridge for me. But I, I apparently uh, it's still news because it keeps coming out to people. Uh, how ironic. See, I, and I don't agree with all these titles. I just say this is how they how people go. Uh, chemotherapy can actually trigger the spread of cancer in adjacent areas. Science confirms. So, not that I agree with so much science anymore. But if that's what the system reviews and takes as experts say and is the only thing you're going to get in, you better look for those things the experts say and at least lead your attack with that. So it says right here now, uh, cancers uh, uh, may be caused by the very therapy called chemotherapy that they uh, that they uh, claim will stop it. Well, okay, fine. They, they want to attribute it and they attribute it to a very particular cause. They've identified what it is. Uh, they discovered the breast cancer patients who were given a practice Packed lictaxel chemotherapy had overexpressed the ATF3 genes, a transcription factor activated by stress. So you put it in a stressful condition, that helps trigger this, folks. Go, go do yoga, too, folks, whatever. The point is, is a little nice little explanation of what they're finding now it causes the cancers they gave you when, the, when, it was, uh, when they were giving you the vaccines, which we started this whole thing with the, lay, with the woman who had breast cancer. If she had been going down chemotherapy, instead of the white blood cells that were reprogrammed to identify cancer as a foe instead of a friend, she would have spread all... Uh, this uh, cancer from her breast to her body. Typically, it goes to the lungs because this, uh, this this potential chemotherapy actually sets up a condition that's more conducive to cancer in the lungs. It sets up a more hospitable place for cancer in the lungs than everybody else. So that's where the the nature moves. And the and the observation by the, the technician or the scientist here was well, it looks like it's a not a passive thing. It looks like it's an active thing. Yeah, it's an active thing. This is how how science hasn't quite got on to the point. Nature is pretty active. If I, if I plant, put a seed in, in fertilized ground, it, it's going to grow there uh, better. If I put it on rock, it's probably not going to grow too good, if it grows at all. Uh, science doesn't understand nature anymore. Uh, but yes, it's an active condition. Uh, again, I mean, it depends on if you had anything, uh, uh, skin ailment, if you had the certain... You've had some kind of creepy crawly thing. It responds by running away. 
you got to kind of outthink it. One-celled animals you're having to outthink is pretty a phenomenal observation if you find when you finally come to that one. A, a, a cholera bacteria, one-cell cholera, it reaches out and grabs more DNA to make itself more adaptogenic and more resistant to the world that is attacking it. It's pretty interesting. Where'd that brain come from? And these are all natural consequences that science uh, is, still hasn't got a qualification for, still doesn't know that they're, they're forcing and their violence in the body's system actually causes uh, nature to go run away and find a better place. And so these, not only are you having breast cancer, but you go to fight the breast cancer, there's science now that says it flees to your lungs at least, goes all over the place, but it actually, by this particular chemotherapy, fertilizes the lungs so that that cancer will grow better. So it's up to you to, in, uh, for your own understanding, uh, to, well, choose, choose how you will. Uh, educate yourself or re-educate yourself. I don't care how you say it. You do the wrong decisions on these life-threatening issues that uh, experts say, and you will be the victim of that, that ignorance. However you want to fix it, you'll be, ig uh, you'll be the victim of that ignorance. More, more ignorance proven. We now have other studies for those of you that are, uh, you know, questioning or need a need a proof and, uh, about this uh, human papilloma virus. And this is all getting a little bit older, but uh, lower the probability of pregnancies in females in the United States of the USA, age 25 to 29, who received an uh, HPV injection. Was a story that was uh, was published. You can read all about it, folks. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, here it is. Here's the notice to you. Uh, we talked about eugenics. We talked about population control. Here's a study. You can agree with it, as experts say, but here it is. Go ahead and use it. This is one of the side effects of that HPV vi uh, vaccine that they made, they're making now boys get, too. So we can continue to be quiet. We can in, be insulted that I say you need to re-educate yourself if you know uh, stuff, or you can be insulted that you have to educate yourself in order to go fight a battle that you may be insulted. But here's the onslaught. Here's the oppression. Here's the facts all tied together. It's up to you to pick them up and go use them. If that's a wrong you want to make right, educate or re-educate yourself to go do it. And if the disclaimer is I'm telling you you have to re-educate yourself, well, I don't know why I haven't done that over and over and over when I say go learn the battlefield. The very fact you listen about the things that you may, I say that you've probably never heard of has to give you common sense knowledge, common sense, the sense of everyone to go educate yourself or re-educate yourself. If we're continuing to see the harm, you have to re-educate yourself over what you thought because apparently what we know as a society and each one of us isn't enough against these oppressors. But now we see the Lowered for the pregnancy rates. Proven now, again, by study. You can choose to ignore this, or you can choose to help your fellow woman and, uh, and, uh, or boy uh, in order to say, hey, look, it, here's one of the side effects, and here's what's going on. Do you want that for your future? Because you're not going to have one if you start keep doing this. Notwithstanding, we're now getting the, the, uh, what, the claims court coming out saying, no, this is a dangerous one. Flu vaccine, like the pig fly flu, all that stuff. Flu vaccine, regular that you get every year they try to promote, is the uh, most uh, dangerous vaccine in the United States based on settled cases for injuries. You understand the settled cases for injuries is going through that vaccine court, and it's actually pushing through the, that whole nonsense mess that they put on people uh, for little ones. I don't think the uh, I don't think the requirement is for adults to go there, but. Uh, for for little ones it is and the va the flu vaccine the one that has the cancers in it if you didn't get that one the flu vaccine is by settled cases the most dangerous vaccine that they that you can uh, you can get you can agree you can disagree whatever here's the here's what we call the facts uh, and uh, if you were wanting to take this on as a, a cause uh, here's one more fact for your bag of facts to go present to some agency in disregard, some local, uh, some local commission that wants to impose mandatory this or mandatory that, invade your private space, invade your private, your private uh, decision, 
uh, and make your uh, decision common to their uh, control. I, I don't know why this stuff just doesn't violate people's senses and they just stop doing what they're doing and go choke everybody out that, that tended to believe their seated decision gave them the power of life and death. But we're more civilized, right? So we got to do a little different. Well, I'm trying to bring that for you. Here's the here's the another point, another way to look at how dangerous these things are, not from your opinion, not from some quack on the uh, uh, quack on the internet, whether they're a quack or not, by their label, not some fake news website. Just you, I tell you, go to the place where uh, the government itself has the evidence against itself, and you throw that on top of the rest of the stuff that you're bringing. And I say just bring it by bullet points and have the big documents all ready to go as attachments or ready to be brought when they want more. So you can limit the amount of work that it takes because it is a lot of work at some point. When you're trying to, uh, you know, if you're trying to change the direction of the Titanic, it might, and you're all by yourself, it might take a little bit of effort and it might be you need to start working as soon as possible. A new, another thing as we went on and what's going on and how the new world is uh, creating these things and now the facts are this, you know, you can call whatever name, eugenics, population control, uh, Bill Gates' better idea of how we're going to reduce carbon. I don't care how you, you cite it. It's all moving the same agenda forward. Uh, disease X, uh, the bad story coming back around, uh, you know, kind of interesting uh, to me that, that we keep tolerating this. And maybe not so much, but certainly not enough to stop it. O out the criminals that are using this thing. Disease X, disease X now. A new strain of bird flu it kills 40% of those who contact uh, who contract hundreds dead in China was this news that came through I think two weeks ago or so. A new new in quotes was what caught my mind. I said, okay, I'll go look for this new strain of deadly bird flu dubbed Disease X by World Health Organization, the WHO, the WHO, not the owl, not the rot group, but the WHO has killed hundreds of people in China. And is just three mutations away from becoming transmissible between humans, according to those same experts that tell you they made the vaccines and gave you cancer. And those vaccines that we gave you, well, maybe they're not so good, even though we said so. And I want to call your attention because they then go on to this strain, H7N9, circulates in poultry and has killed 623 people out of 1,600 infected in China. A mortality rate of 38.3%. Uh, H7 and 9, folks. And that caused me to remember. Remember when I did the pig's fly flu? And I told you it was novel and all that kind of nonsense. It was made up. And they were making it up. It's not. It's real, but they're man-made. Like M Michael Mann made climate change. Man made the uh, pig's fly flu. And it would be a natural flu when pigs fly. Scientists to create mutant form of new bird flu virus to work out risks of it causing a deadly human pandemic. I got this right up the internet. Uh, memory, I had a memory flash. It was written a few, not flash nasty, but uh, flash here as a inspiration. Memory flash. Uh, deadly forms of H7N9 will be made in high security labs around the world. Do I need to read more? That's why the quote was in new. Okay, so coming around again, they're making this stuff up for you. For your consumption, you can keep up, you can keep quiet, you can get insulted at what I tell you. You need to go there and learn more, or not doing enough, or whatever. Uh, these people mean a business, a big business, a global multinational business, and you may be its next victim. Scientists to create mutant form in 2013, and what was the news today? It's in China killing people. Are you getting it, folks? I mean, novel means they're making it up. And I don't mean it's made up and it doesn't exist. No, they're making it up as a weapon. This is weaponized stuff here. They told us in 2013 they were going to do it. They were already doing it, but forget that. point is they said in 2013 they were going to make it up. It's going to be in secure labs. Well, apparently it got out. So what's this no novel influenza? I found it. It's a silence in this. Some of you may not agree with the way I do this, but I use it as a follow the dots. It's going to refer to a different uh, subtype. Let me read the very first sentence and listen in for the quiet, the silence of the fact. Uh, avian influenza, or blue bird flu, this was, I got this off of a PDF from some 
first responder website talking about what these things are, some fireman website or something. This type of influenza A, remember they just said the vaccine for this is the number one by injury problem, of influenza A naturally occurs among wild birds. Naturally occurs in wild birds. Then let me go down to the avian uh, H5N1. Now, they don't give me a number at the influenza A for wild birds. I get down to avian and they give me H5N1. Well, isn't that the H's, uh, all that was the novel ones? And didn't we find, I think I couldn't find it real quick, but didn't wasn't there a, a technician that was found in uh, Singapore or someplace smuggling out uh, the latest version and got caught? Well, here they say avian, and they give me a number h five n one it's not the one of the it's not the one on the last news, but this is one that was happening before i don't the natural one don't have a number this avian one with a name has a number h five n one flu is a subtype of influenza a virus that is highly contagious among birds but rarely infects humans. Scientists follow h five n one flu closely because it has potential to cause a deadly pandemic. Well, remember pandemic is the who, not the rock group, not the owl's definition of two DNA uh, uh, entities, one giving another DNA this uh, entity this stuff that could be the doctor injecting you with this man-made or novel via flu, which it, nor, natural flu has no number, they give you this subtype, and they follow it because it could cause a deadly pandemic. Isn't that what we just heard about H9N7? The ones the scientists were going to make? They know all about this. What you don't hear in this second sec sentence is they refer it to man's use, and man's use as a weapon. You don't hear that in the very first sentence about the wild one. And so, just to move this thing over, I'm trying to show you if you haven't quite got it, Maybe maybe you're half listening or sometimes and don't quite get when I do explain this stuff. And so I hear it weeks and months later that uh, you didn't quite get it. This is man-made stuff for man-made purposes. Michael Mann made climate change. Okay, This is who is making the bottom line to give you vaccine, to create these things, to bring vaccines into your awareness. And they're not bashful to kill a bunch of people. China is the best place to kill people because they got twice as many people as they need. And I told you, watch China is going to be the hub on how this starts to work because they, they just they have no care. They, they got too many people in their space. They need more land. They told us back in 1985 about that, for those of us that were around. Got the documents. Novel. It's not a novel thing. It doesn't have a name of its wild. It becomes novel, and with a name, it's got, it's got numbers. We have evidence that they said they were going to make it in 2013 that pops out this year killing people. And they tell you it could be a pandemic. Well, of course it could be a pandemic. If it moves from China, it has to be the one the scientists made and escapes into another region to become a pandemic. That's all they're going to have now. And they can start scaring you again. Remember, that's just the definition of, of the pandemic. It's not an epidemic. I guess it could be an epidemic where it gets its own legs and runs along this, now it acts like a normal one, a normal a virus. But these are novel. They're man-made. I told you that's how I identified them way, way long ago. Again, the pamphlet will not identify the wild strain as having a number. But the ones the scientists are interested in, the one they're making, that's what the interest is. The one they monitor, this is the, that's sustainable development. They monitor and get data on to see how their work is doing in the world to promote the agenda. They are interested in that, and they're interested relative to an H WHO implemented policy. Pandemic. Is all in this pamphlet. Two lines, if you know what you're looking at. And for those of you that see this and want to take that on as the cause you want to make right, and you educate yourself, I'm, I'm offering you on the blogcaster as links to start seeing this all and bringing this into your awareness and making the copies of the information that you need and doing the back. Now you got to do the backup research to qualify the fact of it all and get it more solid, get it if, preferably back to experts say because that's what the system of experts looks at, experts say. And you get them arguing amongst themselves as a cool technique. I've told you those, that as well. I say all this stuff. I'm not saying you go out there and get yourself in jeopardy. I've said everything I'm suggesting is you try to do without jeopardy. 
So why would I need a disclaimer on a safe and sane way to approach things? So another thing that most of us, at any kind of common sense, that's every one of you, I hope, you look at all this stuff you're doing that they're imposing upon us, and you're just shaking your head, can't figure out why the heck do they say it's safe and sane and all this other stuff, and it's uh, public welfare and whatever all their, their police powers are, when it's not. We have another thing going on now. Uh, for those of you that had a question, a lot of you that are probably listening to me is to the choir here, but this is to the people that quote, don't quite get it. I'm not really on the fact of the... I'm not even looking at the fact of this proof of this. I'm saying that the agencies of the government have allowed this until now. And they did so because none of you all stepped up or knew to step up in the right proper ways to stop it long ago. That uh, another, after the controversy on all this for decades, the U.S. releases a report showing elevated health risks from non stick chemicals. Who knew, folks? It was such a boon for us, for us, wasn't it? Non-stick, we could eat real oh, quick, fry it up, and throw it in the plate. Anybody who ever saw a non-stick pan smoke knew there was a problem. You could smell it, for one. So I don't know what the big controversy was. But if we needed proof now, we actually can get the report. Uh, here it is. Your non-stick pans, folks, you should be not using them. Not even if they don't smoke. See, if you didn't get to chemistry class, you don't understand and you haven't been told and you don't quite understand the importance of the fact that elevated temperatures accelerate chemical reactions and interactions. So nonstick to chemicals uh, can endanger human health. Yeah, just use it, folks. You can. If you're not using it, it doesn't endanger anything, I suppose. Significantly lowers levels than the EPA said. This is what I was telling you about challenging the agencies. They create the standards that they give you a comment period that you can destroy those standards. And if you don't, they hold these standards for decades while everyone in the country gets poisoned. Uh, I don't know what to say more than that. Here it is. I, they're telling you the Environmental Protection Agency uh, is the one that made that decision, and they're finding that the standards were way too high compared to the, when the damage starts happening. Where were, uh, where were we to make the comment that your standards are ten times too low? Or, well, too high here for the harm. In other words, ten times before we got to the time that they were testing, we were getting poisoned with this stuff if you didn't have a nose or a thought about it. If you didn't go look at the most cursory review of what chemical reactions happen around these so-called non-stick uh, non chemicals, they're not sticking to other chemicals, they're not sticking, they're not, not sticking to your, your physiognomy. Hey, enough on this. We can go on and on. You can read the story. I don't have to. We are, I'm telling you there's a process behind changing the agency standards. All the policy standards are changeable. It may be actually the first time that we're starting to see that there are scientists out there that are actually studying the right things, actually challenging the system of things that you can use. They're not going to do this. You can use it. Unless someone is a, finds a wrong they want, they want to make right, their daughter's dead, their wife's died from cancer, the doctor, the, the scientist, whoever they are, they're probably not going to be too interested to go promote through the processes, that you can pick this up like a baton and start to go do it. It's what I tell you about all the time, whether it's public lands, whether it's DEA, uh, whether it's a cannabis, whether it, whatever, all those. Cray Tom, whether it's here, standards for how they measure things and what they accept as non-toxic, all these things are challengeable. And there's actually a number of ways to go ahead and do that. Each way has its different uh, viability and validity relative to the system that they've established, which itself can be challenged the way they do this. But the crickets isn't going to do a thing. It takes action. I don't go, well, I look, people come, well, it's fine. take an action. I haven't heard anybody talk about this until I started doing it, uh, and then, then, then a delay, and now everyone's talking about all the action you have to take. And then nobody does. Again, nobody's a generality. Don't get all bent out of shape. Don't fold your protein so you look like some cancer to me. It's a generality. Certainly not enough to cause the kind of uh, re reintegration that we need to to regain control of the things 
that the government was supposed to do. It was sitting there to protect us. It, it is situated to do that. If I talk about land law, I can see it all the time. We've been infiltrated in those systems, and now they're being they've been uh, they're used as a weapon against us. Again, we were silently invaded by a Mongol horde. And we were supposed to be the vigilant masses. Well, now we've got to take some steps back. We, may not, we can't attack it. We can't defend ourselves directly. This was an invisible attack. So we have to, my thought, it could be wrong. I mean, anybody can come and we can criticize on this one. This is just an opinion. My thought is we better take a couple steps back and figure out we've got to read, look at the terrain, and we may have to take these guys out a little differently. This is where my objection to going to the Second Amendment, I know with a bunch of ignorant people who can't figure out that, uh, how to pronounce certain words or how certain conditions are. We don't have a clue about what we're about. And we aren't our, our fathers, if you will, our, our ancestors. You know, we, if we were, we probably would not have let this stuff happen in the first place. But we're not. So now we've got to figure out that limitation. Anyway, so keep moving on about cancers and in, being injected and all this stuff and it just the, the world reflects upon the in, the microscopic world reflects on the on the uh, macro world that we have uh, we can still see this cancer in the world uh, us official says israel is behind the recent attacks in syria there was actually a question uh, somebody uh, bombed uh, syria again this cancer sits over there to reflect to us how the government our governments this is the coalition now. It's all, all you all over the pond and the France and all that other. All you too. How your governments treat you is how they treat those people there. And we see the microcosm. What the little cholera over there, and it's being allowed to, to invade people in Yemen. And the Saudis attacked the clinic that was supposed to fight it. The little cholera bacteria that reaches out and grabs DNA to protect itself in the future from future antibiotics. Is all the same cancerous type of emotions we do as people against ourselves. The cancer we can see the Israelis are in the Middle East. And the Israelis are just a proxy. They're another cell that reaches out with its tentacle to attack people. See, to me, it's just on and on and on. It's like this fractal. At some point, it's, the evidence is all around us about how this works. And we ignore it. A U.S. official says Israel is behind. Well, because the United States was blamed for it. But in fact, Israel again attacked a cancer, attacking a body, a foreign body. Do you see the synergy of all this works, folks? We're, we're, it's being explained to us. We're, we're in a pretty desperate condition globally. From And it starts inside us to outside. It starts with the invaders of experts to those that would claim to, to make claims of things they don't have right to. Those that would make claims to deciding for you what's good for you. And you look down the road when someone finally starts to look at it, wait a minute, that wasn't good for us at all. Well, that gave us the cancer. We're now having to go to the, the doctors in order to get the, the, the remedy for it. And the remedy is just our immune system being reminded on how to fight, it, to fight the foe. Where are we, folks, fighting our foes? So now we find out through this story that is is Israel Islamic State's Air Force is now attacking in that story we're told they're attacking another target not just Syria this cancerous tumor on the face of the earth in the story that I don't read telling you that Israel's behind this cancer in the world is, is attacking Syria is the story that it actually attacks Iraq not Iraq. Iraq. This cancer over there is reaching out and going through the body of the Middle East and invading even another country. The United States military denied it was responsible, but the U.S. is responsible for funding and supporting proxy Zionistas, folks. What we're watching is this cancer Remember, they put inject something in, and, the, and that naturally runs over to attack and invade another thing. We saw that in the use of chemotherapy. Kill the body just short of it dying in order to see if it's strong enough to kill off the rest. That isn't the cancer, was the theory. We find out that that just creates a, an immune system destruction that allows for a better environment for the cancer to spread somewhere else. Israel looks like it's in a desperate escalation 
underneath the protection and foster and encouragement of the U.S. as the United States or coalition proxy. Um, do you see? You don't. Does anybody see these correlations? What do we do about that? We let it be the lesson of information for us, informing us on how this works locally, and we start to address what we can locally. Based on this, also this condition, where now Israel is Israel, the proxy Israel, is actually using is going after United States impositions. Outraged, but frankly not surprised, is seemingly the whole and entire thing for me, why I'm focused on this statement. The United, in defense of the serial violator Israel, U.S. ditches U.N. Human Rights Council. What a mouthful here to talk about, folks, but I, we don't have a, a, too much time to really get too de- much into it. The U.N. Human Rights Council, what's human rights? But inalienable rights, aren't they? They're subject to the state. Did you know that? I keep telling you, go read the Human Rights uh, uh, the, the Declaration. You get two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through, you realize all those rights are subject to the state, all of them. So it, this, is not a, this is not a high esteem council to begin with. And I would say the United States was right to pull out, pull out of the, all of the UN. But it's why they're doing it is not right. Because they're supporting a cancer called Israel, their proxy, which makes them, the United States, is materially liable. And until you start looking at this nesting of harm that goes on, and you start identifying it, my thought, in that regard, the hierarchy of harm, until we start to do that and understand what those are, we're not, gonna, we're not going to be able to uh, address any of it, even local. Even local. And that's my problem with all of us, and then certainly arguing with each other. The United States withdraws from a corrupted organization anyway. The Human Rights Council has even Saudi Arabia as one of the members. Complete war criminals. Should have been a should have been a, um, a, a, a clue. But the United States doesn't go out because of that. It goes out to protect a cancer that it placed over there to harm those people. That we now see is this cancer, this expanding cancer, where it attacks Iraq. And we know the plan to take out Syria and Iran and Iraq and Libya and North Korea is still undergoing because we're, the United States has become a meddler in the world, uh, another Genghis Khan, uh, international laws of which don't exist to control because it's now gone to brute force, executive expedience, as they told us in the 2010 murder memo. Not even the Lieber Code, law of war, applies here. And you all became, well, besides the crickets, you became enemy combatants when they say, without overview. So here's the United States not going out because Saudi Arabia is a, which they also, the United States still supports, to go destroy Yemeni and blow up their only cholera facility, which they then stockpile their chlorine and send it over to Syria to threaten and do false flags there. They could use that chlorine over there in Yemen. But no, the United States doesn't help there. No, they're going to go bomb the only cholera, the brand new cholera facility, where we learn that little bitty cholera bacteria has a sense on how to protect itself against it, against its foes, which is dynamically di- DNA necessarily. One cell, folks. The United States doesn't pull out because there's a war criminals in the, in the Human Rights Council. No, it pulls out in order to protect a cancer it's developed in coalition with other people. Coalition is nothing more than cooperative. It's a socialism, folks. It's not capitalistic at all. I'm going to ask you some of you, I didn't get to the point. In a capitalistic system, can you have an FRN? I think I asked it, but I maybe didn't fulfill the point. Can you even be in a capitalistic system with a note, a bill, as your money? As money, not money, as money, with as laws. Can you even be in a capitalistic system? And if anything that that, that non-capitalistic medium touches, is that can that be considered even close to capitalism? Is one of the major failures of people that say that capitalism doesn't work. We haven't been in capitalism since this fiat currency took note, and we diminished our use of gold and silver, or land patent issues where you can't, you're exclusive to that. Remember, the gold is its own property from a land that was granted its own property. These are two properties. 
that are assets, not and cannot be brought under servitude. Why aren't people pulling this together? I don't know. That's where your power is. That's the exclusionary position. Wherever that gold goes is an exclusion of all the world. So my question was a came out. There was a a, a question about this sir, this Israel. We know it's a cancer. And we know it because they tell us. If you just listen to their words, they tell you what it is. They have no actual borders. They're not even actual state. They're, they're considered occupiers. Something with no borders isn't a state. There it is, number one. And someone made a comment to that. And it was like through a Twitter thing. We know it by the fact it has no border. It can't be a state. The United States is, uh, is, is protecting it like it is a state. Going to take there's some new deal going to come over now some fantastic deal they're going to give East Jerusalem to 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 these this this cancer, but the fact of the lack of the border tells you it is a cancer it has no borders and its only purpose is to destroy the host, wherever it is. And so I made the observation, if you find it this thing has no borders, how is it not why does it remind me of a spreading cancer? which reminded me of this other thing about the woman and how the, the spreading cancer could be stopped or how it gets spread, how it gets imposed, injected in your systems by your vaccines and, and how it spreads when you try to cure it. And this is the inverted point. You could Someone could say they're curing something when in fact it starts up something, something somewhere else that's worse and more deadly. Is the definition of this collaboration process is what we fight all the time. I'm saying we, my colleagues and I, Jefferson Mining District, our lawsuits, all this. See, to me, I see this all in one, it's all a reoccurring mandala, uh, this uh, this uh, f this form, that around and around and through all the shapes you go, but you're going to end up fo tracing a path back to the center, the hub. And you come out and do the identical thing in a slightly different way, and you come back to the hub. It's all about the hub and whether or not you're addressing that. And you can take your circuitous route all you want. You can defend on all. You can fight little corners of it. But you never get at the hub and you don't get anywhere. Well, why did people think that going extrajudicial uh, by executive expedience in the 2010 murder memo, what did they think they meant here with this cancer over there in the United States empire uh, imposes, injects, like some experts say on everybody? Remember last week, folks. Don't forget, don't forget this. The U.S. Empire does abroad what it does at home. It says all for you uh, can in France and Canada and over oh, England, all oh, Germany, all you guys, same thing. Shoot first, think later, remember? Last week we heard it. Shoot first, think later is those military, they call them, they call them cops. They're, they're military soldiers. And, what, and I ask on this uh, Twitter, what is human rights anyway, really? It, it's your inalienable rights and servitudes subject to the crown, subject to the ruling power. It's not what everybody wants to think about it, and it's not the trite little positions that I see being made and the memifications of these things, which were effective. Another one came through. Uh, someone said and posted uh, about what you give licenses over and the government sells you back your rights. That's a mass ignorance. The government doesn't sell you back the rights you had. You go tell the government you're going to engage and pursue the activity that's regulable by the license. You don't exercise your rights at all. And then you blame the government for you going and doing the, the dirty deed to yourself. But, that, but that's a meme, another meme that goes around like this, in, in, uh, unalienable. It's wrong. It's not correct. It's wrong thinking. It's not supported by anything, actually. And so we've got to fix that. We've got to re-educate ourselves to that and then go back out and return to defend ourselves. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope something I said makes sense and something you can engage. Join with me to battle against what this thing is, oppression we're against around the world, everywhere, so everyone can get involved. Uh, Yippee-ki-yay, uh, we can go along here, I guess. Uh, Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com uh, and, and all the hosts and uh, Spreaker. Um, Grammy Mary, thank you for the donations there. And freedomsnetwork.com needs that donation to keep going. Instead of going once a month, let's go ahead and get it down the year. It would be nice. And uh, wherever all else you are helping to display, uh, spread the broadcast, I thank you very much. Uh, I'll be here next week. Nature and tech this willing. <laughs>